Whether you're a beginner or a pro, FL Studio has something for everyone. But is it the best choice for you? In today's video, I'm going to talk about the pros and cons of making music in FL Studio. FL Studio was not the first DAW I used. I had bounced around from Reason to Ableton to Reaper, and while every DAW has its upsides, I found that FL Studio made the actual creative process the simplest and most seamless from all the others I had tried. Which is exactly what I think its biggest upside is compared to other DAWs. Its workflow. It is so easy to start an ID and get into a nice creative flow without having to break it up with tedious tasks such as setting up tracks, routing, or doing any annoying editing. One of the biggest reasons why FL Studio's workflow feels so natural is its easy to use piano roll, which in my opinion is the best in the industry. For most producers, most of your time making music will be spent in the piano roll, but a big problem I ran into when using other DAWs is just how clunky and hard to use they were, which made creating super annoying and would replace any ounce of inspiration I had with frustration. Creating a simple chord progression could easily take me four times as long in some other DAWs because you need to double click to create a note, manually drag notes around to shift them up and down, so much extra unintuitive nonsense. Whereas with FL Studio it's as simple as left click to create a note and right click to delete. The piano roll shortcuts invite you to experiment around with your songs compared to other DAWs that make experimenting a complete pain in the ass. Not to mention the scale helper feature built directly into the piano roll which helps beginner producers make sure they're staying in key and the ghost notes that allow you to see notes from other patterns to help you create harmonies or counter melodies very easily. Another big benefit to using FL Studio is just how many great stock synth and effect plugins come with it. FL21 currently boasts a total of 93 total instruments and effect plugins for their producer edition which covers basically everything you need to start producing seamlessly integrated into the program. Now while this covers basically everything you need to start making music with FL Studio alone, you can easily find a bunch of great, free, fantastic plugins all over the internet. And luckily, I just recently uploaded a video covering all of my favorite free plugins and plugin bundles that you can watch right after this video. If you combine all the great tools featured in FL Studio with the plugins listed in that video, you are well on your way to creating the fantastic music you have always wanted to make. I will leave a link to that video at the end of this video. While other DAWs might have FL Studio beat with their stock plugins, FL Studio's lifetime free updates means you will have a constant addition of great free tools at your disposal over time, whereas other DAWs usually make you pay an upgrade price whenever a big update comes out. And that is another one of FL Studio's biggest benefits. You pay for it once and you have it for life. Unlike most other DAWs where you will constantly have to pay another $100 to $200 every two years or so to keep up with the updates, as soon as a new version of FL Studio is available for download, you just sign it to your account, click download, and boom, you're up to date with any new additions added onto the program. Collaboration might be one of the most fun parts about music production, but other DAWs can make it kind of an annoying hassle to do. But with FL Studio, sending over your projects with everything used in the song is as simple as pressing a button with their zipped loop package feature. Open up any project you want to send over to one of your fellow producers, go to export and select zipped loop package. This will send over every sample used in the song along with the project file to make it super simple for any other FL Studio user to open. This makes bouncing back and forth from collaborative projects super easy to do. Now I could talk about the pros of FL Studio for hours, but to try and make this video a little shorter, I'm going to go ahead and do more quick fired pros so that we can get onto the cons a little faster. Customization. With FL Studio 21, Fruity Loops brought back a feature the community had been begging for for years, which was the ability to customize the visual side of the program. While it may not be at the level of some other DAWs, being able to customize the color palette and layout of the program to your specific liking can really help it feel a lot more like home. Versatility. FL Studio makes it incredibly easy to create just about any genre you like, whether it be trap, house, metal. It's incredibly easy and simple to create just about any genre you can think of. Knowledge. With FL Studio being one of the most popular DAWs in all of music production, it means that there is an endless array of tutorials on the internet that can help you on your way to making the music you always dreamt of. Run into an issue? You can easily Google what you're looking for and either find a solution for it on YouTube, Reddit, or directly on the FL Studio forums. While I am an avid FL Studio user and really love all the great features that come with it, there are some fairly big downsides to it. The biggest one in my opinion is the current state of recording and editing audio in it. While it has improved a lot in the last couple of major updates, it still isn't on the same part as many other DAWs that have recording and editing audio down to a T. I do think this is where their focus is going towards for the next couple major updates, but as it currently stands, recording audio in FL Studio takes a lot of trial and error, and really takes some time to get used to compared to other DAWs like Reaper that make recording and editing audio incredibly simple. Another big drawback to using FL Studio is how confusing it can be if you're trying to transition it from another DAW into FL Studio because of its unique layout and workflow. This really 
really won't be an issue if you're a complete beginner to music production because you won't be used to the layout of most other DAWs, but if you've gotten used to a DAW like let's say Reaper, which was my case, it was really hard to get used to manually routing sounds to the mixer, having to go through extra steps to create variations in different patterns, and having every step of writing, structuring, and mixing a song feel a little disconnected. But I will say, once things started to click, it was all uphill from there, it definitely just took me some time to get used to. Another downside that I actually spoke about in a recent video of mine is just how messy automation clips can start to get when you're making a full song. While FL Studio makes it incredibly easy to automate just about any parameter, it's also incredibly easy to have a super cluttered up project. There are some ways around this, but at the end of the day, it's really just trying to fix a problem that is really only seen in FL Studio. And I would say the last big downside to FL Studio is crashing. This isn't an issue I run into very often anymore because I do have a pretty beefy computer now, but when I was using my old laptop to make songs, FL Studio seemed to crash way more than any other DAW I used. I can't say specifically if this is an FL Studio only problem because we are all going to have different experiences with our different computers, but with all the memes out there about how often FL Studio crashes, I'm going to go ahead and say that this is a problem we have all ran into before, so I do think it is a point we should bring up when suggesting FL Studio to others. There is a fairly simple fix to this though, as FL Studio does have an autosave function you can turn on to save every 5 to 10 minutes, so if it does crash, you won't be losing out on too much progress. At the end of the day, these DAWs basically all do the same exact thing, it's really all just about what clicks for you personally and what helps you create the most efficiently. If you enjoyed, it would mean the world to me if you left a like on this video, and if you're an FL Studio user, leave some of your favorite pros and cons down in the comments. That's it for this video guys, I'll see y'all in the next one.